All right, Comic Con day number three at the Hardy's VIP. You ready for it or what? Yeah, I'm ready. He's got his badge on, trying to be cocky with that badge. Uh, got my Seamus 515 shirt on. This is the most packed day. This is, you know, usually the most people, you know, that attend the event this day. So uh, we're gonna go inside, kill some time, walk around, and then we got the Q and A in a few hours. You know, we got here really early today. It's the last day for us over here, so. Should be good. Usually this is the day with like the coolest costumes you'll see in there. So once we get inside, we'll get some footage. This bandana, man. I love it. Really? Aces and eights. Nice. <laughs> it's on Mark Central. John Cena was the top guy. Now that you have returned, and John Cena is still the top guy, are you guys surprised that WWE has found that breakout star like an Austin, Cena, or Rock? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's just, I, I think the, the toughest argument with that is just that the fans have changed so much. And it's not a bad thing. They're just much more intelligent. Uh, they're, they're much more knowledgeable of the situations. You know, if you look back to the Attitude Era, that's kind of when... Uh, the curtain was pulled back and people knew it was more entertainment. So as time has went on and with the, with the power of the internet, with the power uh, of information sprawling everywhere, it's just harder for uh, fans to buy into some, some people, you know, like Roman Reigns, for instance. All the 
the bass once Roman Reigns deleted. That reaction, for instance, you know what I mean? It's like wrestling is almost done kind of on a multi-level platform now. Because if we were back in the Attitude Era, I think Roman Reigns would be much more popular all across the board. Now, uh, wrestling fans like uh, males, you know, that are older, they kind of understand and get the business. They go, well, come on, you know, this guy, you, you want him to be our guy. You're kind of making him be our guy, and they, they reject that. You know, so it's very different in this day and age. So that, that, that does make it tough. But one thing I can say, if, if you are evoking emotion, and Roman Reigns certainly does, I mean, you're doing something right when it comes to that. Uh, but as far as a, a new breakout star, I, I think it's more based around now of like promoting the brand of WWE and trying to have everyone or as many as possible top stars working for your deal. Um, what do you think the status of the Broken Game coming to WWE and what, who do you think is going to win, Mayweather or McGregor? <laughs> I'll take the first question. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress right now. So, uh, so slowly but surely, we're, we're going to get there, where we need to be. Who's your pick, Jeff? I'm afraid Mayweather's going to win, but I'd like to see him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long did you know before you were going to return at WrestleMania? Can you record me? Yeah, gotcha. We knew uh, a little over three weeks. Before uh, before WrestleMania, that we were going to return at WrestleMania, and it was about ten days out that we knew it was going to be a ladder match. Uh, so we knew we knew for a while, so it was pretty exciting, which made it all the more stressful. We were like uh, fulfilling all our obligations <coughs> all around the world and with ROH. So you know, like our big part is like, okay, we got to work hard, but we can't get hurt. <laughs> so we we knew for a while, and it was worth the wait. But it was like Jeff said, it was really. Uh, it was wonderful whenever the pressure was off, you know? Thank you. Yeah, and that night before, I think I went through three tapes. Hey there. Uh, my puppet, Saki, has a question for you. Oh, please ask. <laughs> Which legendary WWE return you like to face in a dream match and wild? What, what, what language is he speaking? What is he? What he's trying to say is which WWE legendary team you like? Would you like to face in a dream match and why? Uh, very good. <laughs> I'm gonna go way back and say the Rock and Roll Express. Man. I, uh, I would say I think the, the Hardys versus the Rockers would be a good match. Not that. Thank you. Then I Hi. Hi. Uh, Hello, Luchador. <laughs> how many more years are you guys going to be wrestling around for? And when are we going to see uh, King Maxo, maybe Matt, in the ring? Oh, oh hell, King Maxo! <laughs> uh, speaking for myself, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to let my body can be my gauge, you know, as long as my body feels good and I can wrestle at a, uh, you know, a high level, I'm still willing to do it just because I love it. Uh, physically, uh, because of Father Tom, I don't know how long that's going to be, you know, but I'll keep my fingers crossed at least, uh, you know, for, for a little while at least, you know, maybe three, four years. Uh, and I would say King Maxwell probably has, I don't know, maybe another year or two, he'll be ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I'm just going to do it for as long as I can unless my rock career takes off. <laughs> I was in track and you guys always motivated me. I would do the two mile and I'm over here like contemplating, oh god. But then you know, I think about you guys, go extreme. So for like two whole miles, eight laps, I just go extreme, you know, thank you guys so much. So my question is that, Matt, since you came back to WWE, like how, like, how broken are you right now? Um, I, I am definitely cracked. Uh, my, my, my body is, uh, is slowly crumbling, no doubt. So uh, I am, uh, I would say I'm partially broken, you know, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a puzzle that I think will eventually be completed. I, actually, I don't just think, I know it will eventually be completed in some way, shape, or form. How do you feel about Jinder Mahal being champion? You know, I, I, I like Jinder Mahal. 
Uh, I was a little bit. And uh, I guess as they say, don't hinder gender. <laughs> Just got done with the Q&A. The question Jeff asked was a question I came up with. Yeah, okay. No, I came up with that question. I, I told him. I'm like, go ask a question. And then he's like, if you can find out a question you're going to ask. And that was actually a good question. That was a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks they knew before WrestleMania. Yeah, three weeks before WrestleMania is when they find out they were going to be returning. So that was pretty cool. That was the best Q&A all weekend in my opinion. But uh, yeah, we're just walking around right now. They got a portal ops coming up and then a signing. But we'll probably just walk around a little bit. A lot of people had to take retakes. A lot of pictures were cut off. Like Jeff Hardy, like well, some guy had his half of his face. Cut half off. of his, yeah, like Jeff Hardy, half of Jeff Hardy's face was cut off. That was pretty damn funny. Uh, Q and A, Q and A was really good too. Um, you know, really enjoyed it. And let's see, show those. Show them on. And then another thing I got was I met Biff from Back to the Future. <laughs> To Kevin, you butthead, and he signed Biff. So, you know, his real name is a Biff. But uh, let me show the picture. I'll have, I'll put the picture in this video though, too. But, uh, really cool guy. Really, you know, really nice. We're going to be doing the Hardys uh, signing now. I'll uh, probably wait for the Lion Diet a little bit, just walk around. But uh, so far, so good. I just see Hey, what's going on? Big fan of the YouTube channel. Excuse me? Big fan of the YouTube channel. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I right. just started with it. Really yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to start doing some more stuff with it. I think now that my wife was, you know, she, she was pregnant and the baby and everything was crazy. I inspired me to kind of do YouTube videos too. So, I'll do it. Um, that looks I'll do mine too. We just got done meeting the Hardys, and uh, at the end, I had my GoPro in the hand. Here, hold this for a second. Hold this for a second. I'm gonna show my GoPro. So the lady's like, I get to Matt. I'm talking to him, and then the lady's like, Oh, your camera. I'm like, and I'm just playing stupid. You know what I mean? Then I get to Jeff, and. Uh, they start really pointing it out. They're like, what is that? You know, not Jeff or Matt, but, you know, the security and stuff. <coughs> and I'm like, I don't want to put this in my pocket because if I put this in my pocket, it's going to get scratched. And I'm just like showing it like this around. I'm trying to hide the lens. And then I'm like putting it back on video. And they didn't really care because they're in such a rush to get all this shit done that they didn't really care, which I don't really get what the big deal is. You know, if you're paying for, paying for like an autograph or something, it's not like a free signing. You should be able to... Uh, Film. As long as it doesn't really take up somebody's time, then we should be able to film. You know what I mean? It's just kind of stupid. Let's show the autographs though. Matt Hardy was really cool. Jeff just said what's up. Uh, you know, we use some kind of special Sharpie. Paint pen. Paint pen, yeah. That's the new thing. Yeah, this honestly, it was pretty cool meeting him. You know, growing up. I told Matt Hardy about the YouTube videos. I used to watch his YouTube videos all the time before I even started making YouTube videos, so that was kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna walk around a little bit, you know, see what else is going on in here. And uh, there was a, there was actually a fight that broke out over here. I guess some guy got caught taking a picture of a girl's yeah, ass. He's got bad. I'm kind of day number three. That's a wrap. Uh, it's starting to rain. How'd you think of the That's day good. there? Really good. good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, a lot of different stuff, you know, changed a lot of stuff with the photo ops, just fine. Honestly, the best part of the whole weekend, though, probably meeting people. You know, people saying, you know, they watch the videos and stuff. That's like the best part for me, in my opinion. Uh, so, just really enjoyed it. Uh, good time. If you ever have any questions about Comic Con, feel free, you know, ask me on Twitter. You know, I'll have my Twitter and Snapchat, all that stuff down below. 
there was a fight earlier. Anybody that follows me on Snapchat would have seen the fight between a guy and a girl. It was just crazy, you know. Six years we've been coming here, we see a crazy ass fight like that. Like the dude pushed the girl into uh into Thomas Ian Nicholas's booth, the guy from American Pie. The guy from American Pie had to leave the booth and shit. It was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, I appreciate you watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you, if you enjoyed it. Watch the other ones. Watch the previous year's ones. Uh, Hardy Boys were cool. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap for Comic-Con this year. Hopefully next event. I really don't know when it's going to be. But uh, something soon, hopefully. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. Thanks for coming out so late, bro. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you all for waiting. I was actually at this pay-per-view, and you know, when you came into the crowd, oh, I tapped right on your shoulder. You were drenched. You were absolutely drenched, and so that was that was the best match of the night, though. Yeah. That was a good match. Yeah, I'm still suffering from that match. <laughs>